guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. So, you know, on Twitter, the Gaming Drag. Today, I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Tennis Ace June's Path. So, y'all, I'm operating on very little sleep right now. Hopefully, by the time this goes up, I will have gotten some, some damn good sleep. I don't know, something's just messed up my sleep schedule, and I guess my body's just recovering or something. Uh, anyway, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm chain, you are up, and let's go. Okay. <clears throat> Well, all right. I'll stop with the teasing for now. I don't believe it for a second. Juno finishes picking two picking two sweets that he wants and orders those. Ayako-san immediately goes back to her customer service personality. Should I pack them up in a cute little box? No thanks. I'm gonna eat them here. She nods and reaches out for a pair of tongs to take them out of the display. Are you sure you don't want more? If it's a matter of money, I can pay. June waves his hand, trying to dismiss me. No. No, no. There's no need. I'm trying to watch what I eat is all. You know, I'd probably buy that if it weren't for the look on your face. Hmm. I remember you coming here yesterday and saying you'd blow your whole allowance if you could, if you could, but that you wouldn't because you had to save up money to go out with Yukon. As always, Iako doesn't miss a beat when she has a chance to cut into a conversation. Ooh, Kitsunegawa-san, please don't tell him that. And as always, she's an expert at pushing people's buttons. You're just telling me this so I'll decide to buy stuff for him and you'll make a bigger sale, aren't you? Oh, I could be. Jeez, why are all the people around me such weirdos? I can't help but smile when they all act silly like this. Come on, pick a little more stuff. I'll buy it for you. I insist. No, I don't want to eat too much. It's almost time for lunch anyway, so I can't be filling up on sweets. Hmm. I stare at him with an intense look, trying to see if he cracks under my gaze. What? I'm trying to decide whether I believe you or not. June stares back at me with the same intensity. Satisfied, I decide to let it pass. This is probably just an excuse, but it's at least one I can live with. All right, then. Just those will suffice. June smiles, nodding energetically. All right. I've already put them on a paper bag for you. Enjoy. Man, she doesn't waste any time, does she? June quickly hands her the payment. She gets him She gets him his change in less than 30 seconds, dropping a bunch of coins on his palm. Uh, which ones did you pick? A bean mochi and matcha cake. Want some? Uh, no, thanks. I hate green tea, so I'll stay away from anything that has so much as touched that has so much as touched matcha dessert. All right then, how about we go while I eat? You sure? Do you have any place you'd like to go to? I have a few in mind. After walking down the main avenue, window shopping for a bit and calming June down through three, uh, through three crowd-induced panic attacks, he leads us into a big, very expensive-looking cafe. My thoughts immediately go to whether he can pay for anything here. Uh, June, maybe we should go someplace else. Huh? Why? Seriously, how innocent can a person be? How does he not realize it? Oh boy, how do I tell someone that I think they're too poor to be somewhere? Before I have time to come up with an answer, June ex June's expression shifts. Ah, could it be that you're worried about this place being expensive? He's more perceptive than I give him credit for. Well, would you be angry if I said yes? Oh, don't worry about it. I researched this place beforehand and I already know how much their menu costs. Of course, I won't be able to order anything expensive like a tart or a parfait, but I should be fine with a light snack and a coffee. Huh, I have to admit, I didn't expect this level of forethought coming from June. His reaction was the complete opposite of what I was expecting. And again, I think I might infantilize him a little too much. It's easy to forget that he's one year older than me. Actually, I still have a hard time believing that piece of information. Wow, look! They even have a grand piano over here! I didn't see that in the pictures! June dashes towards a big blue piano they have facing the windows. It's also next to the counter, so a waitress immediately notices June approaching it. Hello, would you like some help to find those seats? To find some seats? We're full right now, so you might have to wait a little bit, but it shouldn't be more than five minutes. A gazelle goes over to him with a smile on her face, giving June a courteous greeting. Just like, I, just like she said, the place is really packed. Even I feel a little bit anxious being in here. June, on the other hand, seems completely fixated on the piano. The waitress notices his interest and turns towards the instrument. Oh, you like it? I'll admit, it's a big draw for our customers. We even have a few kids who come over here just to bang on the keys. It's actually a pretty expensive one, too. It's from... Steinway and Sons. June mumbles out, cutting the waitress off and completing her sentence. He seems to snap back into reality right afterwards and looks apologetic about it. Oh, sorry, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. My mind just kind of filled in the blank before I had time to think about it. The gazelle, noticing his nervousness, chuckled softly. Oh, don't worry about it. Did you read the brand logo on it before I had time to tell you? Oh, no, I've played on one of these before. The waitress blinks a few times, then her lips part into a radiant smile. Could it be that you know how to play the piano? June nods energetically. 
Oh, wow, that's wonderful. I love the sound of the piano, but I could never play it myself. We actually offer a free dessert to any customer who plays a full song. Would you be interested? June, uh, June's eyes immediately light up. Can I? The waitress smiles, winking at him. Of course. Why don't you play a song while you wait for some seats to be take to become vacant? I'll hold one for you if you're finished. If you're not finished before that. Okay. Huh. This was unexpected. Although I won't complain about being able to watch him perform again. I just love seeing him play. I suppose it's not a bad deal for the business either. They get someone to play a song at a much cheaper rate than a decent artist could would charge. Although, I think that with his skills, June could ask for a lot more than a single dessert. He sits down in front of the piano and closes his eyes, taking deep breaths. I can already see a few heads turning his way. Seems like the customers noticed him. I just hope he doesn't take it doesn't choke due to the nerves. Then again, he did play at a much bigger venue just a few days ago. No, wait, but he did freak out that time. God, I'm just going around in circles with this logic. I'm making myself nervous instead. But as soon as his fingers touch the keys, a calm and gentle song starts playing out of the piano. The room that had been boisterous and full of noise up until a second ago becomes completely silent. June's piano is the only thing that makes a sound. No, his piano is the only thing allowed to make a sound. As soon as June starts playing, it's as if the other sounds were prohibited from sounding. While the melody isn't particularly fast, nor does it seem very difficult, it touches the heart. Soon, everyone in this cafe has eyes for no one other than June. The piano is his, is his stage, and he shines the brightest whenever he's playing it. This is something I had already noticed before, but June turns into a completely different person when he plays. While he's usually bright and cheerful, he can also be meek, shy, and insecure. But whenever he plays the piano, he has an honest, gentle smile on his face, as if he were enjoying himself from the bottom of his heart. June's smile, June smile which is as beautiful as the melody he weaves, soon infects me. I'm left grinning from ear to ear. Before they've even noticed, June's music has enthralled all the customers in this cafe better than any words ever could. At this moment alone, June is a star. No one dares speak while he's playing. Even the staff seems completely stunned. As the melody starts, starts nearing its inevitable end, the people seem to realize they were completely paused up until now. Little by little, they start to snap out of their days, but every single one of them has a satisfied smile on their face. Once June's performance finally reaches an end, he lets out a sigh, opening his eyes and staring at the piano with affection. He strokes the keys as if he were caressing someone very important to him. The waitress from earlier comes back. Her expression is markedly different. While I didn't for a second believe her previous smile was fake, the one she has on her face right now seems so much more genuine. That... I don't even know what to say. Wow, that was beautiful. Thank you so much for playing. Ixale starts clapping, and soon enough, all the other diners follow suit. It seems that only now did June notice all the attention his, way, his play has gathered. As soon as, he start, as soon as he turns around and notices all the people staring at him, his face turns bright red. Thank you! Damn it, I don't even know if I've been enthralled by June's song as well, but the expression he has on his face right now is just lovely. I can actually feel a little bad. I wish I could give you more than just a dessert for that performance. She puts a finger to her chin, staring off into space, seemingly lost in thought. Oh, I know. Hang on a second. The waitress leaves towards another table. Then another one. It seems that she it seems that she's making rounds on the restaurant. By the way, June, what song was that? Oh, <laughs> that one was he scratches the back of his head. That one was actually an original song I composed. Wow, really? It was insanely beautiful. It's a little embarrassing playing one of my songs in public, but I just felt like playing that one. I didn't know you could compose too. What do you mean you didn't know? I told you I planned on becoming a composer. That's why I'm busting my ass to try to get into that school in Germany. Ah, now that he mentions it, I think I remember him saying something like that a little while ago. Sheesh, talk about having a bad memory. Sorry, I completely forgot about it. Still, I had never heard a song you composed before. It was so beautiful. I really have no words. And now he's smiling again. He's so easy to disarm. It's cute. Now you're just trying to flatter me. <laughs> he's so bad at taking compliments. But then again, that's one of his charming qualities. Damn, he's really humble to a fault. It's such a breath of fresh air seeing someone at his level being so nice about it. Most people at his level would be cocky jerks. I'm back. The waitress comes back with a glass jar filled with... Money? She's grinning from ear to ear, seemingly very pleased with herself. I didn't think it was fair that he'd only get a free dessert after a performance like that, so I asked my manager for permission to ask the customers for donations. We actually got enough to pay for a full meal for, for two and then have some money left over. What? Wow, honestly, I, even I'm caught by surprise here. When we turn to look at the diners, we see that many of them are looking up, looking up at June with big smiles on their faces. Is this the power of music? I don't know if I can accept this. 
It's not like I wanted to get something out of it. I just did it because I wanted to play. The waitress nods. But these people decided to chip in because they really loved seeing you perform. Really, most of the customers were ecstatic to put some money in. They thought you deserved to get something out of that performance. Even if you say that... Come on, please. I even chipped in a little myself. I just really loved your playing. I don't think I've ever heard a prettier melody. Whoa, for someone like June who is not used to the attention, having all these people suddenly focusing on him and praising him must be a little overwhelming. Just as I'm afraid that June might start freaking out, he takes a deep breath and nods. If they're really sure about it, then... As soon as June reaches for the jar, he glances over at the other people in the cafe. Most of them are smiling and nodding at him as if telling him it's okay to accept it. We want to give you this. It's a scene I myself would never believe could happen if I, if I weren't witnessing this. And to be honest, I think no one deserves this as much as June does. After a couple more minutes of wait, a table finally clears for us to sit down and eat. During our, during our entire stay at the cafe, we had a bunch of people coming over to our table to speak with June. It was quite a weird experience seeing him become so beloved by so many strangers, but all the people who watched him perform left the establishment with a smile on their face. I never knew music could be this powerful. Honestly, I feel as if I'm spewing lines straight out of a romance manga. But why is it that I always end up thinking, thinking this sort of stuff when I'm with him? It's a bit embarrassing for a guy my age to be romanticizing everyday life so much. A little after lunch, we leave the, ca leave the cafe feeling quite pleased with ourselves. The money that was given to June was enough to pay for both of our meals, including desserts, and there was still some left over with that the staff insisted June take with him. I also insisted on paying my part, but June absolutely refused. This is all. This is for all that you've done for me. Please accept it, he said. Honestly, I kind of didn't want to, but it was hard to refuse it. I could tell that June really wanted to be able to treat me, and he was pretty happy when I accepted, too. Honestly, he's so pure that it's liable to bring me to tears. Is there any other place you'd like to go to, yuichi san uh, Huh? June's words snap me out of my days and bring me back to Earth. Jeez, I'm already spacing out in the middle of the day. That's not good. Did you say something else and I didn't realize it because I wasn't paying attention? I'm sorry, did you say something else? You don't have to look so amused by my confusion. <laughs> don't worry. You were looking kind of cute spacing around, so I just, uh, uh, so I was just having fun, fun watching you. What? My cheeks suddenly feel incredibly hot. That's a really embarrassing thing to say all of a sudden. Uh, AC, anyway, no, I don't really have any preferences. What about you? Hmm, let's see. June starts humming a familiar song. Does this mean he has no idea and is trying to think of something? Honestly, didn't you plan this all beforehand, or are you just just winging it by this point? Oh, I have no idea! You don't have to look so happy just because you figured it out. I know you're sort of an airhead, but at least try to think a little bit about stuff beforehand. Didn't you tell me you already knew you were where you wanted to go today? June looks, looks ahead again. At least the area we're walking through isn't very crowded right now. June seems a lot more relaxed than he usually is out in public. Maybe it's some lingering effect from his performance at the cafe? Well, I know I want to go to the amusement park, and I, I knew I wanted to eat at this cafe. Other than that, I haven't given it much thought. If you're out of ideas, then we could just go to the park now. June shakes his head in negative. I don't want to go right now. It's still too early. I mean, I know I said I wanted to go to the amusement park, but... I think I'm enjoying the company more than I'd, than I'd be enjoying the park, so it doesn't really matter what we do. Huh? Badoomp. Why did my heart just go badoomp? Shit, my face feels so, so hot right now. Did my heart just skip a beat? Why is my heart skipping a beat? Fuh! What's this? Why is my mind getting so hazy all of a sudden? Deep breaths. Deep breaths. Just take deep breaths. In and out. In and out. Are you alright, witchy san Without me even noticing it, June had gotten a lot closer to me. He was walking on the tip of his toes, looking me in the eyes with worry. Do you have a fever or something? Your face is looking really red. I, 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 I don't want to hear that sort of thing from you. Your face was better than a tomato back in the cafe. Eh? Oh, I can't help it. Of course, I'd get embarrassed in a situation like that. What do you have to be embarrassed about? I'm asking myself the same thing. Uh, anyway, let's just think of another place to go to so we can kill time before we head to the amusement park. Change the subject. Change the subject. It sounds good. Do you have any suggestions? Jeez, this guy could switch gears so fast it gives me a headache trying to keep track of his mood. Well, at least he's not up in my face anymore. Ooh, my face is getting hot again. Think of something else. Think of something else. Wait. Oh, shit. Okay, apparently I was hitting the secret options. I'm getting nervous. How about we go to... Crap, I'm drawing a blank. What did June like, the, like other than playing piano? Um, let's see. There's video games. We could go to a video game store. Oh, there's also books. I remember him saying that he liked books. Wait, that's it? Oh, I have an idea. June looks up at me with expectation. 
I just remembered a piece of information that gave me the perfect clue as to what, what we should do next. Heh, <laughs> bless you, memory. How about we go to a bookstore? A bookstore? My bookstore? That's not a very fun place to go to. I nod. Yeah, sure, but I know you like books, right? Well, yeah, but I don't... I don't want you to... But... I don't... Won't? But I don't... Yeah, I do, but won't you be bored in there? I shake my head again in negative. I might not be the most avid reader, but I still enjoy books every now and then if they're really interesting. But that's not the only reason I suggested that. Once again, June looks at me in confusion. And that money you have left over from lunch, I'm pretty sure it'd be enough for you to buy a book. And I remember you telling me that this trilogy you really like just had its last book coming out a couple weeks ago. Ah, you're right! I honestly didn't expect you to remember that. I was so sure you weren't even listening to me when I was talking about the books. Why would you think that? Well, I got the feeling you were just looking for random topics of conversation to calm me down when I was freaking out about the competition. He's much more perceptive than I give him credit for. That really sounds like a great idea. I hadn't even thought of using the money for that. Thank you so much, Yuichi-san. Well, I didn't really do much, so I just gave him an, a suggestion. It feels kind of good having June be so happy with me. <laughs> I have a certain urge to fawn over June like a child. God, control yourself. He's older than you, and he hates being treated like a kid. Even though he acts like one most of the time. All right, off to the nearest bookstore we go. Aye, aye. Heh, <laughs> but still, I can't help but be swallowed up by his carefree pace whenever I'm with him. Hanging out with June is so much fun. All right, I'm going to go ahead and pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks or tip if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.